Hey guys, this is Lisa, and today I have two very special guests with me. I have Gurmeh Kaur and Aranya Johar. Gurmeh is a free speech warrior and a peace activist, and she's written a book called Small Acts of Freedom. And Aranya is, among other things, a spoken word poet, and you've probably seen her uh, poems of Brown Girls Guide to Beauty and a Brown Girls Guide to Gender. Both of them went viral on the internet. Yeah. And now they're both interns at BuzzFeed. <laughs> So they're also <laughs> very good friends, yeah. and I'm so excited. Yeah, we are so excited, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so obviously you both have quite a lot in common, um, and I think the internet's picked up on that already. Yeah. <laughs> Given that you're both like so young and internet famous and have strong opinions. So another thing I feel like you both have in common is that you shatter the stereotype that women can't be both conventionally attractive and smart, <laughs> right? Why are we taught as girls from a young age that you have to choose between being pretty and being intelligent and yes. as if these two things are like incompatible, you know? Mm-hmm. I really like to unwind or, you know, start my day up with just trying, a few, you know, a few makeup looks. I think it's a great way for me to express my creativity on a daily basis. And um, something though which I see so often is a lot of women are very encouraging of you know uh, makeup and no makeup and stuff like that. But there will be some women who uh, who will shame you for wearing makeup. And I do realize that a lot of this is very internalized. You know, as a young girl, you want to be naturally beautiful, and whether that's you attain that through makeup or otherwise, there's still a certain connotation or preconceived notion attached to that. Um, But I think it's so important that we show people that you don't have to pick between being smart or beautiful when you can be smart and beautiful. And um, I think that's, you know, the most important thing for me that we should be able to use our femininity and, you know, be strong as well because from a young age we're brought up taught that, you know, being feminine is weak, dressing a certain way is weak. And there's this whole, I'm not like other girls, yeah. you know, uh, statement that we throw around so much. But I think as a, you know, over the past two years, the more people start comparing me to other women, I'm so flattered. So, I mean, I've, uh, I remember this certain incident that happened, especially when the, uh, so I was in my college and there was, and it is it, in the heat of the storm and everything was <laughs> happening. And I had media on my, there was, there were media trucks and media people with their cameras and their uh, and their microphones on the front gate of the college in the back and I'm sitting and I'm I'm just in prison. I can't go out because if I go out of either of the gates, they're going to mob me. That's that's how terrible it was. And I remember this senior of mine coming all the way. You know the story. So I remember the senior of mine coming to me and they're like, listen, there's this young girl, she's a journalist, she wants to have your interview. And I was like, that's fine. Everyone here wants that, but I, I'm really scared, I can't go out. And then she's like, no, and she also said something along these lines that, hey, listen, you have to get, uh, and in, what I was saying was, listen, we are all from the same institute, we're all from LSR, we're all from the same college, why don't you speak and, you know, whatever questions they have about the, uh, you know, the, the protests or campus or nationalism, why don't you speak? They're like, we, we've been doing it, but they're like, she wants to speak to you. And I was like, why is she saying that? She's like, because that's this is this is what the journalist went and said. She's like, why do you think Shaila Rashe uh, broke out in this uh, broke out during the JNU? Row? Why do you think people want to speak to Guru Mahir? That's because she's attractive looking and Shaila is attractive. And that hit me. I was like, is is that why? Uh, and it, it's something that stayed with me. I still haven't been able to process how I feel about it. I mean, I, I definitely do not have the best feelings. I think though that. Um, unfortunately, sometimes people can also underestimate how smart you are if you're pretty. Yes. Or kind of play either characteristic against yeah. the other. Sure. And and I think that's really unfortunate because it sort of um, you know at the end of the day with the activism you were doing, for example, mm-hmm. it must have hurt to hear that to a journalist the reason you were newspaper worthy was, was your face, right? Was, right? Instead sure. of your thoughts. Yeah. And while I mean, you know what? Take it, right? Yeah. You want to put me in the papers yeah. because I look a certain way. Hopefully, yeah. at least my opinions will also get yeah, that's, that's exactly it's so sad that we're used yeah, to have yeah, yeah. it. You think of exactly, it like that. Yeah. But it's like, Jalo, take it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've been blessed genetically. Yes. If so, that's going to get my opinion on the platform, you will use it. But if only people would kind of um, able to see the yeah. two things yeah, as, together. It, yeah, and, and it's not in competition. Yeah, yeah. And it's also because, you know, how you're so con- you're conditioned to think this way. And not just, yeah. I mean, I as a child thought that. 
if this girl is pretty then she's not smart because mm-hmm. that's how I'm conditioned that's how it's something that I've internalized just because it's around so much so the first thing like I said you need to do is be like women we are going to be pretty we're going to wear our red lipsticks we're going to color our hair we're going mm-hmm. to wear mini skirts but we're also going to go and you know start rallies we're also going to go and have conversations about you know write powerful poetry we're also going to go yeah we're also yeah. we're going to be both the things and yeah. we're going to do it simultaneously and we don't we're not going to and we're going to shatter the stereotype that you've grown, sure. grown up with that pretty women can't be smart or smart yeah. women ne- you know do not have to be should desexualize them you know yeah. something i've noticed is when it comes to female journalists a lot of trolling mm-hmm. is just uh, politicizing their sexuality yeah you know a lot of it are um, photoshopped images of them in compromising photos yeah and um, you know calling them things such as whores and sluts and you know uh, i think at the end of the day we really need to normalize women being sexual beings and even yes. <laughs> that's why <what laughs> having yeah. multiple partners you know because no one's really talking about it you know and, we, and india is having sex <laughs> people mm-hmm. are having sex but the thing is no one's going to talk about it yeah. because even as women we are creating this whole idea of what is a pure woman what is a worthy woman and i think a lot of it is very internalized i know as a child i would go through that as well as a child i i remember thinking that i'm going to marry the first man i kiss but realistically there's so much more than what goes behind it now i'm older i don't know if i'm going to get married but at the I end of the you. day if i can sit down <laughs> with my mom and say mom this man is so attractive and she like understand and says absolutely but have you seen this man that's a conversation we should yeah. be able to have as women but it would be absolutely you know um, ignorant to say that we women have been perpetrated a lot of this as well there's a lot of misogyny internalized misogyny yeah. but the minute we start calling it out mm-hmm. the easier it becomes for every other woman yeah. we need to start making things like whore like the words whore and slut not um bad and negative we need to start owning up to it and you know reclaiming it reclaiming it oh, exactly yes. let's start doing that you know and i think that's when we can really start the conversation about women as sexual beings in india the minute we women who have the mind start talking about it only then we can pass the mic and have more women talk about their sexuality and i think that quite like people think women can't be both smart and pretty yeah. they think that women can't be both sexual and a good student sexual yeah, and yeah, a good yeah. family relationship yeah. sexual and for sure one who read a book not party <laughs> yeah. at night you know what i mean yeah. like there's this idea that that you have to be wild or not yeah, 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 yeah. or oh, she's a bad, bad girl, girl. Yeah. you know <laughs> enjoying sex or having sex yeah. doesn't make you a bad it for makes sure. you human you just it's yeah. such a fundamental part Absolutely. of being a mammal yeah. um that you know and so many men want to have sex with women but they want a virgin wife <laughs> yeah, how does that equation work <laughs> how does that equation work because we have movies like cocktail <laughs> where in the end the guy is like i want to marry this girl who's so pious and beautiful and, so and come from and yeah. religious and i love the movie but you know this is what i think this is what i took away took from that movie was how there's this man who's been living with this beautiful woman to pick up out a code and in the end falls in love with a guy his mother likes a woman a woman yeah oh, sorry a woman will fall in love with a guy that would be like okay sorry i'm just yeah but you know it falls in love with a woman that his mother has approved, yeah. approved and said this is perfect and you know i also feel how that, and that happens every single time you know guys will always go for a I want to fuck the bad girl and marry the good girl. This is bullshit because yeah. you know who are bad and who are good girls, yeah. right? And and good girls yeah. can be bad girls as well. And you know there are so many younger boys who are seeing this, and when they see it, they internalize it. For when if everything around them is telling them that your woman is nothing but uh, but somebody who's going to dance to an anthem song for your viewing pleasure, a woman is nothing but uh, an object that the hero has to go attain, a goal that he has to attain, yeah. uh, like to, property. Yeah, like a property that he has to attain to prove his masculinity. That's what the boys are going to think, especially and and which is also why while I say that women need to have this sexual agency, I also need, I also want all these feminist women to be. Vi- not feminist women not just women to have take these roles where not where they're not reduced to just objects yeah. but there's so much more than that because they are and also this creates this whole idea that to be yeah. hot or sexy i need to dress a certain way yeah i need to talk a certain way i have yeah. to look a certain way when i honestly believe a lot of it is confidence 
the minute you start believing you are attractive and smart yeah. you will start um doing whatever you can in whatever way you are comfortable with to make yeah. it happen yeah. even if that means reading more to become smarter you're going to make that happen if that means dressing more comfortably trying something completely out of your comfort zone in terms of colors or dressing styles then so be it but there's no um you know fit structure in which you have to be to yeah. be attractive and i just think it's important that we you know we define what sexy is for ourselves mm-hmm. i think i think that um it's it's interesting how on the one hand you know society denies yeah. women sexual agency mm-hmm. and then pop culture makes it seem like the only thing we're going yeah, yeah. for is yeah. sexual agency and actually we need to create some sort of balance yeah. right where we're allowed to be yeah. sexual when yeah. we want to but we're not seen as only, only sexual, sexual, sexual yeah. yeah right and mm-hmm. and people think i mean you know the the i guess sort of the people with the privilege might think like look at these women you know what yeah. yeah. they're saying they want to be sexy now they're saying they don't want to be sexy make up your minds but yeah. it's really much less binary and much yeah, less yeah, black and white right yeah. absolutely it's, i think for overall we need to start defining mm-hmm. sexy and also having sexy be more than just physical traits yeah. being confident is sexy being able to talk well is sexy mm-hmm. being able to um ask for more is sexy being able to say no should be sexy small things like that you know mm-hmm. to encourage people to realize that it's a very loose term and you're allowed to use it and apply it the way you want mm-hmm. to